Hi there, guys. Sorry I can't be there today. I'm sick. I feel like a bit of an idiot because I'm sitting here uh, talking to myself in my living room, teaching Math 12 to nobody. But I figured this was the, the best way to not waste the day so that you can uh, you can get something done. Anyways, we're going to look at this fifth tutorial here, solving logarithmic equations. Last time we looked at solving exponential equations. To solve exponential equations, you did it by taking the logarithm of both sides and then manipulating the equation. To solve a logarithmic equation, eventually you're going to do the anti-logarithm of both sides. There's a few problems in here we'll do together and then you can work on the rest and some of the practice. I uh, got some hints here for you over at the side that you're going to have to use some logarithm laws and then you're going to have to use an anti-logarithm to kind of get at the variable. The variable's inside of this log function, so eventually you're going to have to do the anti-logarithm to get at it. Just like last time the variable was inside of an exponential function, so you had to use the logarithm to get at it. All right. Now, hopefully by now we're starting to feel more comfortable with logarithm laws, and if you have two individual logarithms added, you can combine them together. So log x plus log 40 can become log of 140x. And then if you want to solve this, uh, if you want to solve this, you have log of something. Log of this. If we if we want to get at it now, we do the anti-logarithm on both sides, which is that, because that is going to cancel that out. You have 140x equals 1,000. So x is 1,000 over 140. Or in other words, 50 over 7. All right. Now that one's got x in one place there. Some things to think about here when you have logarithm functions. When you have exponential functions, x could be anything you wanted. Here there's going to be some restrictions on what this variable can be. Remember, if you experiment with your calculator, you can see what type of numbers you can take the logarithm of and what type of numbers you can't, and that'll help us figure out what the restrictions are. If, if, you, if you take your calculator and... Uh, try numbers here. You can take the logarithm of any positive number that you like. Uh, you can take the logarithm of 1. You can take the logarithm of 0.5. You can take the logarithm of really small numbers here if you like, but as soon as you get down to logarithm of 0, it's undefined. Okay, you can't take the logarithm of 0, and you can't take the logarithm of negative numbers. They're also undefined. The restrictions for this right off the bat here are when you're looking for values here, x in this case has to be bigger than 0. The reason that's important is because when you go through the process of solving, sometimes you create an equation that has a solution that isn't even a solution to the original the original equation. So you just have to look to see that that this final answer is okay given this restriction. This is larger than zero, so it's okay. Uh, you can always check again by substitution. I'll leave that up to you to do. We've done that before. Solving logarithmic equations, you're going to have to use log laws usually. And use the anti-log on both sides. In whatever base. In the appropriate base. To, I don't know, let's say to get at the variable. Okay, let's do a couple other ones here. Uh, this looks a little different, but it is a logarithmic equation because you have a variable that's inside of a logarithm function. It's got some other operations as well, but 
to get at it, you're going to have to use anti logarithms. This says log base 2 of log base 3 of this x minus 3 is equal to 1. It doesn't say log of 2. It doesn't say log 2 times that. It says log base 2 of log base 3. Okay, so it's, it, it, it's, uh, you're going to have to work your way inwards towards that that variable one by one. If you have log base 2 of something, okay, let's pretend we don't care about what's in the brackets. We don't know what's in the brackets. You have an equation that says log base 2 of something equals 1. To, to undo that log base 2, you got to do anti-log base 2. And then you have just what's left inside those brackets. So that's your first step here is log... Uh, anti-log base 2 on both sides, and then you have log base 3 of x minus 3 equals 2 to the power of 1. Anti-log base 2 or 2 to the power of 1, so you have a 2. Now you have just a single logarithm function of that, of that variable expression. Log base 3 of that, now you're going to do anti-log base 3 on both sides because it cancels this out. And now you have x minus 3 equals 3 to the second power is 9, which means x has to be 12. And I have that answer wrong. It's actually supposed to be 12. Apologize for that. Now, you, you can't really check this one on your calculator because you don't have a log base 2 function or a log base 3 function on the calculator. What restrictions are on this variable? Again, you can't take the logarithm of 0 or less. This expression inside here, x minus 3, x minus 3 has to be greater than 0. The expression inside that you're taking the logarithm of has to be positive. So that means that if x minus 3 has to be greater than 0, x has to be greater than 3. So our answer is okay here because it's greater than 3. Later on, you're going to have to reject some answers if they turn out to be to not meet the to fall outside the restrictions.